For tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Tommy Cook of Tulsa, Oklahoma, is the speaker of the evening. And this is the 4th of July week family camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Last night in the shower, this song came into being. And it's beautiful. And uh, Debbie's going to come and sing it for us. When I am weak, then I am strong. My help comes from the Lord. When I am weak, then I am strong. My help comes from the Lord. Jesus, King of kings, lover of my and the prophetic word. Praise God. Let's stand, please. Thank you, Glenn. How many enjoyed the camp meeting? Yeah. Still the Lord, yeah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you, Lord, this word is our life. And Lord, let our life be bound up in this word. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you'd uncover it, open it up to our hearts tonight as we go into it, Lord. We're nothing without you. We submit to you, Lord. You're the true teacher, Lord. We call upon you to help us and to teach tonight uh, through thy servant. In Jesus' name, and we all said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. How many believe the Lord's doing something? In all of us. Isn't that right, Brother Coffee? Praise God. He's doing something. Turn to Revelation. I mean, no, that's the only book in the Bible. I know. 66 books in the <laughs> Revelation 12, I want to look at a few verses. Praise the Lord. Revelation 12. Thank you, Jesus. How many believe that the church is under attack? <laughs> but how many know Satan should be under an attack from us? Amen? We're not just moving in a defensive mode. We should be moving in an offensive mode. Isn't that right? Here in chapter 12, look in verse 3. And there appeared another wonder. He had just seen one in verse 1. And this word wonder means sign. In heaven. 
And that heaven is not where God the Father is. How I many know there's no impurity where God the Father is? But wherever a dragon is, you got impurity. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them where? To the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, to devour, literally eat up her child as soon as it was born or birthed. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule or shepherd all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and to his throne. How many believe we're living at the end of the age? How many really believe it? Don't raise your hands if you don't believe it. If you really believe it. Okay, thank you. Praise the Lord. And we see at the end of this age something going to happen. The tail of the dragon. Now, we know the dragon is a spirit. He's a fallen angel, isn't he? And we know that the Bible said he has a tail. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Now, this is not something happened way back there. This is something that's happening at the end of the age, which means there's going to be a great apostasy in the midst of what God is doing. So when God is moving, also, there's also a, a moving of Satan, isn't there? Yes. To destroy and come against the people of God, those who've lived in the heavenlies, those who've known the Lord and served the Lord, and yet it says those stars come down from the heaven, heavenlies. Now, when is this going to happen? Let me tell you when it's going to happen, basically. It's going to happen at the beginning of the tribulation. Of course, it's going on now. There's a process that's going on now. But of the fullness of it will be taking place at the beginning of the great tribulation. How many know the great tribulation is coming? Yes. And let me tell you something. The church is going to go through it. You're not going to get out of here if you're living before the trouble. You're going to go through the trouble. How many know he wants to prepare us to go through some trouble? Yes. Amen. Amen. I know how the church teaches it in most places, but I, I tell you, the Lord is going to take us through, isn't he? Yes. By his grace, yes. by his power, and he's going to help us to overcome. Do you believe that? Yes. Amen. Praise God. And so this tale is drawing those, these stars down from the heavenlies, and it's at the time that God is raising up the overcomers. The word man-child literally is the overcomers. That is raising it's a corporate body throughout the earth, throughout the world. And so God is raising up that people. Now, I want to look at this tail just a minute. Uh, how many know the word tail means to wag? Or it means hindmost. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy 25. I'm going to teach on this tail tonight for a few minutes. Deuteronomy chapter 25 uh, in the Old Testament. How many know where Deuteronomy is? Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. As a revelation. <laughs> Deuteronomy 25, fifth book, Peggy said, verse 17. 25, 17. <laughs> now, I said, the, I said the tail meant to wag or hindmost, right? All right. Remember what Amalek did unto thee, by the way, when you were come out of Egypt. Now, first of all, how many know that Amalek hits you as you're heading towards your inheritance? As Israel went towards their inheritance, the, the, uh, the promised land, right in the wilderness, the Amalek came against them. Yes. How many know that when you're heading towards the goal, which is Jesus, how many know you've got an enemy that's going to come at you? Yeah. Amen. It lives right in your own backyard. Can you say amen? <laughs> now, here's what it says. Notice. Notice how he met thee by the way and smote what? The hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble... Behind thee, how many know he's going to attack you from the rear? Yes. And then it says, when thou was faint and weary, and he feared not God. So when people are weak, when they're fainting and weary, how many know the enemy's going to hit them? Yes. He has no mercy. Well, let me tell you, we should have no mercy on him. Can you say amen? amen. Therefore, it shall be when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thine enemies, including Amalek, Round about in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, and thou shalt not forget it. Hallelujah. Now, what is Amalek? Who is Amalek? Come on, tell me. Who is Amalek? It's the flesh. He was the grandson of Esau. But he's a picture of the flesh. 
Now, how do we overcome the flesh? Look in Galatians 5. The Bible tells us how to do it. Anybody want to overcome the flesh? I mean, you can't cast it out. I said you can't cast it out. Galatians 5, you've got to kill it, amen? Galatians 5, 16, here's what it says. This I say, then walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And you want victory over your flesh. That walk in the Spirit will, will, will defeat the flesh in your life and my life. Can you say amen? amen. You've got to train yourself. I have to train myself to walk, to pray in the Spirit. Come on. To live in the Spirit, to be led of the Holy Spirit, to walk in the Spirit. It's a process, isn't it, brother? Okay, so we see that Amalek represents the flesh. And so the flesh is part of the tail there in Revelation. And so, brethren, we must conquer our flesh by walking in the Holy Ghost and crucifying and putting it down. Amen? Somebody say amen. amen. It's true. Praise the Lord. Now, there's a difference in stumbling. I mean, oh, we've all stumbled. And we get up again. Isn't that right? The right to stumble and get up again. And, we, and then there's the word backsliding. There are people who backslide. He's married to the backslider. Isn't that right? And then there is the word apostasy. There are people going to go into apostasy, brethren, that will never recover. Now, let's go to 2 Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I don't want to be one of them. I don't want to be a casualty. Do you? 2 Thessalonians 2. Uh, just a few verses here. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto Him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, uh, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come. Now, now notice, the day of the Lord, he says, cannot come. The day of the Lord, the coming of the Lord. How I many know the day of the Lord is the coming of the Lord? Oh, it's, you know, there's a lot of things we can say about that. He said, though, this day will not come except there come a falling away first. And that falling away is not a rapture like some of them are teaching it. It is not, even the Amplified Translation, the footnotes talks about a rapture there, or catching away. That's error. It is not a rapture. It is falling from God. It is, it is the revolt, the rebellion turning from God. Are you hearing me? Amen. And where's it at? It's in the church. And he said, again, I'm going to read that, No man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come the apostasy, or the falling away first, and that man of sin, sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So the apostasy brings on the man of sin. Is that right? The falling away brings on the man of sin. Now, look at the next verse. Who opposeth? And exalts himself above all that's called God, or that is worship, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he's God. There's no temple in the Middle East, and I doubt if there'll ever be one. I know they've talked about it since I've been a Christian. But I, even if they do, that's, that's their business. But how many know we're the temple of God? This is where he's sitting right here. This is the temple of God. Are you hearing me? We have to overcome this guy first. Can you say amen? The Antichrist lives in this temple. And we've got to deal with that Antichrist, that flesh, that soul man. Amen? And secondly, we've got to deal with the spirit of Antichrist, and then we have to deal with it out there in the world. But he says here in verse uh, 4, notice, he said he's worshipped so that he has God sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He's claiming to be God, and self is God today, isn't it? Self is a God. Can you say amen? Yes. And we have to crucify ourselves. Praise the Lord. All right, now... So, uh, the apostasy is coming. It's already here in a measure, but it's going to increase as we get to, closer to the coming of Jesus. But yet at the same time, I mean, oh, God is moving and pouring out His power. Yes. It's not all negative, is it? But yet, God is moving. There's people coming to God, coming to the kingdom, and yet there are people turning. Now, let's see, see this in Matthew. Turn to Matthew 24. I'll show you there. Matthew 24. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Matthew 24, and look at verse, uh, look at verse 10, verse 10, and then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise, and shall do something. Now, Paul said, don't let any man deceive you. One of the ways we can be deceived is false prophets, okay? Verse 12, and because... 
lawlessness or iniquity that's brought on by the false prophet ministry, okay, shall abound or be multiplied, the love of many shall wax cold. So those who have known Jesus, amen, and we would say we're hot Christians, become cold Christians. Those who love God become haters. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Now, verse 14, in the midst of this apostasy, what does he say? This gospel, come on, of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So you have the apostasy on one hand, and you have the outpouring and power of God flowing to the nations Hallelujah. on the other. Can you say amen? amen? And it's happening that way. Praise the Lord. I want to be in the latter, don't you? Amen. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. And so it, it's happening today. It is happening. Praise the Lord. So, so that we have to overcome the flesh. We have to overcome Amalek, that tail of the dragon. Now go to Matthew 7. Let's look at this false prophet just a little further here. I mean, you know, the, I'm not trying to magnify uh, the, this thing tonight, but I'm telling you, it's working. In, in, in uh, Matthew 7, verse 12, 13, Enter you in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, broads the way that leads to destruction. Now, I know we can apply that to sinners, okay? But how many know also we can apply this to the church? Yeah. All right, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. And that fullness of life, come on, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. It's that holy, holy life, isn't it? Yes. Now, next verse, though, beware of false prophets. What's keeping people out of that straight and narrow way? Is submitting to the false prophets in the church. Beware of false prophets which come to you. They're going to hunt you out. And how are they coming, brethren? They're coming in sheep's clothing. They're going to look like a, a sheep, but they still smell like a wolf. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. They got deceptive tracks. They cannot grow wool. Come on, a, a, a wolf cannot grow wool, can he? And you know what you need? You need a good sheep dog to discern him. Isn't that true? And we need shepherds today. Come on, they'll warn the church. Amen. Of those that are false. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly, here's a false prophet, inwardly they have a false spirit. They're raving wolves. So a false prophet has something in him that's false. Is that right? Amen. Now he comes, he doesn't meet the, head, the mature uh, ministries head on. He doesn't meet those who are seasoned, but he goes to those weak ones many times, to those in the church that he can... Uh, you know, making roads too. And you know what he does? He shoots his venom right into them. He shoots his poison right into them. And if they open up and receive the poison, they begin to foam at the mouth and attack the leaders of God. Can you hear that? And so we must recognize false prophets if they come our way. Come on. Amen? Remember it says they're going to search you out. They'll come to you. Praise God. So we need to be warned, don't we? Now, look in Luke 6. Luke 6. <clears throat> I believe it's Luke 6, I want. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 6, verse 26. Uh, let's go back to verse 20, 22, rather. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, when they shall separate you from their company, and when they shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice you in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in like manner did their fathers to who? To the prophets. I want you to notice the real prophets were hated, they were separated from, they were reproached, and they cast their name out. But look down to verse 26. Woe to you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. But I say to you, which hear... Love your enemies, do good to them that hate you, and so forth. So they were well spoken of. A false prophet shall be exalted. And you know what? He has a large following many times. Isn't that true? Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. True prophets never gather people around them. They never seek for people to follow them. And you know, they'll get in trouble with the Lord. We're not following man today. Come on, we're following the Son of the living God. 
We may see Jesus in our brothers and sisters. Isn't that right? Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, Christ the anointed one, the Spirit. But we're not out just to follow men, are we? No, we're to follow the Lord Jesus. Praise God. And so, go back to Matthew 24. One other verse. In verse, verse 24. Matthew 24, 24. <clears throat> Praise God. 24, 24. And here's what it says. For there shall arise false Christs, false anointings, and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive somebody. The very elect. You have the elect, and there's, a, there's the very elect. Amen? And then he said, Wherefore, if they'll say to you, Behold, he's in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he's in the secret chambers. Don't believe it. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For whithersoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. And that's the crowd that's death. That's not a rapture. That's the false prophet and their crowd in verse 28. And they're going to be gathered, brother, as a carcass. It says eagle, but it can also be vultures. Amen? Hallelujah. So, we must overcome the flesh. We must overcome the false prophet. Now, let's go to Isaiah 9. And let's see this tale. This tale of the dragon. In chapter 9, verse 13. Uh, no, verse um, 14. Therefore, the Lord will cut off. How many know he can do it today, too? From Israel, head and tail, branch and rush in one day. The ancient and honorable, he is the head, and the prophet that does something, teacheth lies, he is the tail. Let me see that. Amen. The tail of the dragon is the false prophet ministry. So if the stars are falling from heaven, don't you think the false prophet ministry is active in this end time? Huh? Among the people of God. Because it's the people of God that's fallen out of the heavenlies. Is that true? So we must be aware that there is such a thing as false prophets. Amen. In the land. Can you say amen? All right. Now, I want you to go to Revelation 13. Let's see this false prophet. And I believe in this false prophet ministry at the end of the age. You have the National Council of Churches, World Council of Churches. You have the... The Romanism, you have the uh, Catholicism, you have all the denominational heads, you have the Charismatics who are warming up to the Catholic Church. Many say we have to go back into Rome. My gospel I preach is not Romanism, it's, it's the old Jerusalem gospel. Hallelujah, Jesus started. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not coming under any hierarchy of Pope. How about you? I want to be under the head, Jesus. Okay, Revelation 13. Now, there's a lot of good people in all those groups. Don't misunderstand me. How I many know we must love the people but hate the system? In Revelation 13, look at verse, look with me in verse 11. And I beheld another beast. He had just seen one earlier, but he, here is the second one. I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, coming out of the carnal realm, the earth itself. And he had two horns <clears throat> like a lamb and spake like a dragon. He's got dragon breath, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, verse 12. How many know a false prophet has dragon breath? He's going to speak by a spirit that's false. Verse 12, He exercises all the power of the first beast before him. He has the same power as the beast, brethren. This false prophet has the same power as the first beast John saw. How many know the Holy Ghost has the same power as Jesus? Do you know that? And causes the earth, those who live in the carnal realm, and them that dwell therein, notice, they, they, notice that, those who, uh, who, who dwell there, that's their dwelling place, that's their residing place, their home, those who live in that realm. Okay, he says he causes those that dwell there to worship this first beast. Now, how many know that the false prophet counterfeits the Holy Ghost? Now, the Holy Ghost causes you and I to worship Jesus. Amen. He don't lift up a man up or a denomination up or a group up. He lifts up Jesus. Amen? Now, it says here, um, whose daily wound was he? All right, verse 13. And he does great wonders, so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. But I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is not a show-off. Come on, he'll do it. He'll do it at the proper time. 
Amen? And he'll do it when the Father and the Son say it's time. Amen? Praise God. All right. Then it says he deceived all them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. The Holy Ghost is not a deceiver. Amen? Saying to them that dwell on the earth, <coughs> they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by sword, and did live. And the Holy Ghost is here tonight to bring you and I into the image of Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. So everything God do, does, Satan is imitating it. So there is that false prophet ministry that must be overcome. Now let's go back to Deuteronomy, uh, excuse me, Daniel, Daniel 8. Now I'm going to show you one other scripture, and I'm going to show you how we're going to overcome that. Hallelujah. Not enough to see it. We've got to know how to overcome it, don't we? Daniel 8. Daniel 8, verse um, 8. He's talking about Alexander here. Alexander's kingdom was broken up in, into four horns. It was a large horn, broken up to four, four parts. And he says in verse 8 of chapter 8, Therefore the ego waxed very great when he was strong. The great horn was broken. That's when Alexander died. And for it came up four notable ones towards the four winds of heaven. And out of one of them. So there's four, and out of one of the four comes a little one, right? Came forth a little horn which waxed exceedingly great towards the south toward the east, and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed very great even to the host of heaven. And now notice what this little horn does. It goes right with Revelation 12. It casts down some of the host of the stars to the ground. How many see that? Huh? Now he's talking about the little horn as he rises in the earth. That's the time it's going to happen in the tribulation. All right? I know there are those who say the tribulation's over, and I say that's baloney and, and hogwash. I mean, no, some of it has been in A.D. 70, but I'm telling you, the great tribulation, we're still facing it. God has dealt with me all these years to preach it and to stand and to declare that the church is going to go through great tribulation. If you don't believe it, read Revelation 7. They come out of great tribulation. Amen? Wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. All right, now, notice what it says. Yea, he, mag oh, he stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself, even to the prince of the host. And by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. I want you to notice, in verse 10, the stars are cast down. In verse 11, the sanctuary is cast down. How many see that? In verse 12, it says here, he cast down truth to the ground. Who's truth? To, who is truth? Come on. It's Jesus. It's His Word. It's the Holy Ghost. And then in verse 13, the latter part of it, it said He get to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden where? Underfoot. Underfoot. So we got all this happening. You take that to Revelation 11, verse 1 and 2. There's an outer court going to be trampled down. Isn't there? Hallelujah. All right. So we have a beast rising. Casting the stars down to what we saw in Revelation. Now, let's go back to Revelation 10. Hallelujah. Revelation 10. I didn't get these teachings out of a book. I mean, no, the, the, the book is what we need tonight. We learn from other books, but thank God we need the book. And I thank God for King James. Hallelujah. I got all the translations, but I'll tell you, they don't, they, none of them come close to King James. Sorry. Amen. Uh, Revelation 10, verse 1. I saw another mighty angel. He came down from heaven clothed with a cloud, the glory of God. A rainbow was up on his head. John saw it in chapter 4, didn't he? And his face was as it were the sun. Hallelujah. And his feet as pillars of fire. Those feet walking through tribulation. Fire. Fire. I mean, oh, Jesus walked through fire first. Huh? No man was tempted and tested like Jesus. Can you say amen? All points, yet without sin. Can you say amen? And yet there's another feet company arising. How many believe you're part of the feet company? Hold your place. Go to Romans 16. Let me show it to you. I could give you many scriptures, but I'll just give you one. I want to show it to you. Romans 16, 20. Hallelujah. And here's what it says in 16.20 of Romans. And the God of peace 
shall bruise. That word bruise means crush. Satan, where? Under your feet shortly. Is that you and me? Hallelujah. Because Jesus crushed him the first time. Hallelujah. We're, able, we're going to be able through his name and power to do it as well. Amen. Can you say amen? Back in Revelation. So these feet, chapter 10. So these feet in chapter 10 are pillars of fire. Walking through fire. Walking through tribulation. Walking through testings. And he had in his hand a little book open. It's literally the right hand if you look in the Greek. And he set his right foot up on the sea, and he put his left foot on the earth. How many see that? Two feet. One on the sea, one on the earth. Now turn to Revelation 13. I'm going to show you how we're going to overcome the beast and the false prophet. Hallelujah. 13, 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. How many know the sea is humanity? The nations. And saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and so forth. Now, where was that one foot? That one foot was on the sea, wasn't it? The right foot. Which means it's on top of the beast. Then you look in, again in Revelation 13, 11. Here is the other foot. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. And that left foot was put on the earth. And so those two feet overcome the beast and the false prophet ministry. Anybody see that? Now turn to Revelation 15. Hallelujah. And look at verse 1. I saw another sign in heaven. Boy, he's seeing these signs all the time, isn't he? Some of us don't see anything. <laughs> I saw a sign, a wonder in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, and in them is filled up something. Notice, I want you to notice it's filled with the wrath of God. How many know if it's filled, it's full? And I saw that it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory, and that word victory is overcomer, over the beast, over his image, over his mark, over the number of his name or nature, standing on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Hallelujah. Here's some overcomers that overcome that beast. Do you believe that? Amen. Hallelujah. And they sing the song of Moses and so forth. And so they have overcome. Now look in Revelation 20. Here's overcomers right here. Praise God. Anybody want to overcome? 20, verse 4. Revelation. And I saw thrones, and they stood upon them. And judgment was given to them, to those that are on those thrones. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, the testimony of Jesus, and for the word of God, which had not, now look at this, which had not, which had not worshipped the beast, not his image, not had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. How many believe they overcome? They may lay their life down, but they refused to worship that image and that beast and all that's connected with it. Amen? Come on. Greater is He that's in us than he that's in the world. You know, when he said that, he's talking about those who try spirits, those who overcome false prophets, and the spirit of Antichrist. Anybody want to overcome? We better, haven't we? We had better. So we overcome tonight by, by becoming part of that foot company. Amen. We put our foot on the sea, our foot on the false prophet, and the beast itself. Praise the Lord. All right, now let's go over to <coughs> Revelation 12 again. And we said here in chapter 12, where we started, that in verse 4, his tail, this is the dragon's tail, isn't it? The dragon's tail. Drew the third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. Okay? So the dragon is literally behind the stars falling. Is that true? Okay? But how do we overcome the dragon? Hmm? I'll tell you eight ways God gave me today. You want to know what they are? And that's my whole message. I, I thought that was what I was going to preach tonight. <laughs> how, the, how the dragon was coming down. How many know he's coming down? Deliverance is one of the keys. 
Luke 10, when they were casting those demons out, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall from heaven as light. Remember that? That's the key. That's one of the keys right there. Amen. God has a network, according to Ezekiel, that's going to bring the devil down. Hallelujah. You know that? God has a networking today around the world that's going to bring the dragon down. Hallelujah. Somebody give him Jesus' praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Another scripture said he'll bring strangers against him in the Old Testament. Uh, now here, look in, look in chapter 12 just a minute. Look down to verse 11. Here are the overcomers. And they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb. Come on. And by the word, word of the testimony. And they loved not their souls, their lives, unto the death. And so we overcome by the word and by the blood, don't we, brother? And how many know there's going to be a great big old chain that's going to be wrapped around him? In Revelation 20 and Psalms 149 says that we can bind that sucker. Amen? With those chains in prayer. Hallelujah. And he's going to be chained and brought down to the pit. Can you say amen? And also with that, look in Isaiah 26 or 22. I don't know. We'll find it. <laughs> You know, <laughs> Brother, Brother Calvin said, you know, some of you don't know what I'm talking about. All right, 24, you have to ask Jack Canada. 24, 21, and 22. Isaiah 24, 21, and 22. It says, it shall come to pass when? In that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. How many know they're pawns? And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in prison, and after many days shall they be visited. Praise God. Satan will be put in the pit, and his demons with him. Now, let's look at that scripture in Psalms 149. Let's turn there. Praise God. i got to get Sister Coffee awake at first. She's tired tonight. <laughs> she had a hard day today. Psalms 149. <laughs> Praise God. Look in verse, look in verse uh, 4. The Lord taketh pleasure in His people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. A two-edged sword in their hand. Why? To execute vengeance upon the heathen, punish them on, on the people. To bind their kings with chains and the nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written... This honor have all the saints. Hallelujah. How many know we're His saints tonight? Glory. Let's praise Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And then the Lord showed me, of course, uh, not only would Satan be under our feet, Romans 16, 20, but look in Isaiah chapter 27. Let me give you another scripture that's going to take care of Satan. Hallelujah. Boy, yeah, there's going to be some shouting, isn't there? 27. Isaiah 27, verse 1. In that day, we keep saying that tonight, Bill, the Lord with His sore and great and strong sword. What is the sword, brethren? Come on. The Word. Shall punish Leviathan, Mr. Pride, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that's in humanity or in the sea. He's going to slay him with the sword. Who do you think that sword's... Where do you, who do you think is going to have that sword? It's going to be you and me and others. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. You're going to learn how to yield, uh, wield that sword against our enemies. Somebody say amen. 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 Let's go to Ezekiel. I'm going to go to Ezekiel. Uh, let's go to Ezekiel 29, maybe. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 29... Praise God. In verse 3, he said, let's go back to verse 2. Son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh. How many know he's a picture of Satan? King of Egypt. Prophesy against him and against all Egypt. Speak and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I'm against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, which hath said, My river is mine own. I've made it for myself. But I will put hooks in thy jaw. 
and will cause the fish of thy rivers to stick to thy scales and bring thee up out of the midst of the rivers, and all the fish of thy rivers shall stick to thy scales. And I will leave thee thrown into the wilderness, thee and all the fish of thy river, and thou shalt fall upon the open fields, and thou shalt, shalt not be brought together nor gathered. I have given thee for meat to the beasts of the field and to the fowls of heaven. Now look in chapter 32. Hallelujah. And look in verse 2. Son of man, take up a lamentation for Pharaoh. Now, uh, the brother in Kansas City, the Lord gave him this word that every time... Well, I'm not going to say that. Thank you, Lord. I'm not going to get in that. Son of man, take up a lamentation for Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and say unto him, Thou art like a young lion of the nations, and thou art as a whale in the seas. And thou camest forth with thy rivers, and troubled the water with thy feet, and foulest thy rivers. Thus saith the Lord God, I will therefore spread out something. What's he going to spread out? Come on, help me. That word net in the Hebrew is network. Yes. I'm going to spread out a network over thee with a company. Many people worldwide. Can you say amen? amen. And they shall bring thee up in my net. Network. <laughs> And then I will leave thee upon the land, I will cast thee forth upon the open field, and because all the fowls of the heavens remain upon thee, and I will fill the beast of the whole earth with thee. Now, when's this going to happen? Look in verse 7. When's it going to happen? And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven, make the stars thereof dark, I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. That's Matthew 24. How many see that? Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, there's a lot more there if you want to read it. <clears throat> Amen? So God is at work, isn't He, brethren? Do you believe that? Amen. Praise God. Let's go, let's go to Revelation uh, t- uh, just a minute. <laughs> we haven't got through this tale yet, have we? Uh, I want to go to Revelation um, chapter 2. I think it's verse 9 I want. Now, you know, brethren... You see the dragon a lot here in Revelation. It's an end-time book, isn't it? Satan is at work against the church. In chapter 2, verse 9, now look at this verse. Jesus said, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, right? And I know the blasphemy of them which say they're Jews, and they're not, but are the synagogue of... Satan. Look at the church of Satan. Now, come on down to verse 13. I know thy works where thou dwellest. Now, here, first of all, he says, church, I know where you're living. I know where you're dwelling, where you're residing, okay? He said, I know where you're at. Even where Satan's seat is. I wonder how many churches that Satan has a throne in. How many homes does he have a throne in? Hmm? He's talking to a church here. Where Satan's seat is. Now, there's somebody here. You need prayer right here. <clears throat> and you're going up my arm. <clears throat> you need prayer. Stand on your feet. Left arm in this area. He goes to sleep. Gives you a problem. I don't know just what kind of problem you have with it, but I, I, I'm, God's given it to me. Stand on your feet right now. Anybody not with, with, I can just feel like, like it's going to sleep on me right now. The way, uh, way, uh, you, you know, operate. Praise God. Okay. You got two of them? Is that it? Should be another one. Okay. Okay, let's reach our hands out to him. Father God, we thank you for healing our sisters in the name of Jesus. Our sister back there, was she standing back there? Okay, stand back up. Father, I thank you tonight for healing that arm, that left arm. Left arm, left arm, in Jesus' name. I rebuke that condition in these arms in the name of Jesus. And we ask, Lord, that you heal, that you touch each one, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father. Amen. Let's give him praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Well, it's subsiding. It's starting to leave a little. Praise the Lord. That's where it works. All right, now, where are we at? I get in the Spirit and I forget where I'm at. 2.13, right? All right? I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith. Now, notice they said, he said two things to this church. You're holding on to my name. You haven't denied my faith, but yet Satan is dwelling there. I mean, see that. And then he talks about Antipas, where he was martyred, who was slain, where Satan dwelleth. So he's residing, he's, he's, he's taking up home, so to speak, there in that church. 
How many of the enemy comes to divide and conquer? Does he? He took up his abode right there. <clears throat> and yet, you know what? Look at verse. Now look at this. Look in verses. Um, let's see here. Look in verse 12. Let's see what the Lord said to this church. To the angel of the church in Pergamos. Okay? This is the th third church. Okay? Let's see what he... This word, uh, Pergamos, means height or tall. All right? Now, these things have he which has something. What's he got? Sharp sword with two edges. How many see that? How many believe the Lord's going to take that sword and work on this church? Because if you read on down here, they not only had Satan among them, but there was a doctrine of Balaam among them, and also the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which means the ministry was controlling the people of God. I mean, that happens in a lot of places. And the Lord said something to them in verse 16, Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with something. The sword of my mouth. How many see that? Now, brethren, I'll tell you something. Balaam was killed by a sword, literally a natural sword. He was, in, he was a soothsayer when he, when he died. Israel, when they went a-whoring because of Balaam's teaching, they went a-whoring after uh, the flesh. God killed many of them with the sword in other ways. And the Lord's saying to this church, if you don't repent, I'm going to come with my sword, the sword of my mouth, and I'm going to deal with that thing there in your church. Amen? And I'm telling you, brother, he, how many know when he comes, he, he, he said, I'll come quickly. And I wonder what he's going to do in this church. I mean, I know he's going to clean the church up. You believe it? Amen. Now, let me ask a question. If Satan is dwelling among us, is there deception on hand? Nobody's discerning this bird. Huh? Is that right? The accuser, the adversary is right in the midst of the church, and nobody's sounding the trumpet. Now, the third message to the church, the third trumpet message... And the third seal all deal with famine, whether it be a spiritual famine or a natural famine. And God wants to deal with that thing. Okay, now, let's go back to this tale. Okay? So we said that Amalek's part of the tale, right? We've seen the false prophet ministry, the beasts, part of it. The dragon, it's his tale. We, we've showed how to overcome all that. Let's go to Isaiah 19. Isaiah 19. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Isaiah 19. And look at verse 15. Well, go back to verse 13. The princes of Zon are become fools. The princes of Nob are deceived. They have also seduced Egypt, even they that are the stay of the tribes thereof. The Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and hath caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggers in his vomit, Neither shall there be any work for Egypt which the head or what? Yeah. Or branch or rush must do. Now, we know Egypt's the picture of what? Come on, help me. The world. Right? The world. Lust the eye, lust the flesh and pride of life. And how many know the church is living in the world? And how many know there's a lot of world in us? Satan is a god of this world or god of this age, isn't he? Yes. And how many know the Lord must purge out that spirit out of the church... And where we'll come to the place where the world will hate us as it hated Jesus. But today the church is not hated like that in some places. But the closer you get to the Lord and you get the world out of you, how many know the world is going to literally hate you? Is that true? And that's the people God's going to use, I believe, to bring Satan down. And that's the people Satan hates. Can you hear that? Amen. So the tail of the dragon is connected with Egypt. Now, how do we overcome the world? First John 5. Hallelujah. We're overcoming. Praise the Lord. Chapter 5. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God, everyone that loveth Him, that begat, loveth Him also, that's begotten of Him. But this we know, that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep His commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world... And this is the victory that overcometh the world, come on, even 
our faith. Hallelujah. So the faith of Jesus will cause you and I to overcome that dragon that's in the world. Amen? Amen. Then in Revelation 9, Revelation 9, praise the Lord. Look in verse 10, Revelation 9 and verse 10. He's talking about these scorpions. And they had tails like scorpions. Hear the word tail? That were stings in their tails and their powers to hurt men. How long? Now look back. Look back with me to verse um, 3. Again, he talks about these scorpions. Okay. And then we look also in verse 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, nor any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. I mean, all these scorpions could not touch those that sealed by God. Let me see that. All right, now look down to verse 19. Verse 19. Here we're talking about these horsemen and, and uh, all these, this vision he was seeing. For well, their powers in their mouth and in their tails. For well, their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, uh, yet repented not of their works, of their hands, that they should not worship devils, idols of gold, silver, brass, and stone, and wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. Neither repented they of their murderers, or sorcerers, or fornication, and thefts. So he's saying here that these scorpions and these um, serpents have tails. Now go to Luke 10. Luke 10. Hallelujah. Luke 10, verse 17. Well, verse 19. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah. So we must overcome the flesh. The dragon himself, literally, the false prophet, the beast ministry, amen, Egypt, and these scorpions and serpents, they're all part of the dragon. Praise God. But God is going to help us to overcome. Do you believe that? I mean, know that, I mean, know that Satan is the strong man. And he delegate, delegates that authority to, uh, to his demons throughout, and his principalities throughout the world. Isn't that right? But how many believe there's a stronger than the strong man? Come on, his name is Jesus. And how many know Jesus is delegating authority to his church, to you and I, and the people of God? Isn't that right? And thirdly, we have to bind that strong man. And, and fourthly, where is the strong man's house? How many know this is it right here? We allow him in. We've got to kick him out. Isn't that right? Keep him out. Amen. And then we've got to spoil the strong man's house. Somebody say amen. Now, I want to give you two more things before we close. Go to Leviticus 26. And I want to show you, brethren, we've got to put the devil on the run. Hallelujah. We've run long enough, haven't we? All, how many how many's a track star here? You've run from the, this problem and that problem. We all have, haven't we? Come on. We can outrun Jesse Owens. <laughs> I doubt we're going to outrun Elijah because he was in the Spirit. Okay. As we get there. Leviticus 26. He said, You shall make you no idols nor graven image, right? I mean, oh, some of these graven images are right between our ears. Anybody can go over and get a Buddha and destroy it, but we might have one between our ears tonight. Neither rear you up any standing image, neither shall you set up any image or stone in your land, this land right here, to bow down to it. I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my Sabbath, reverence my sanctuary. I mean, we're that tonight. I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes, keep my commandments, do them. Then I will give you rain in due season. How many know it's the Holy Ghost to us? The land shall yield or increase. The trees of the field shall yield or fruit. And your thrashing shall reach to the vintage and so forth. And I'll give you bread that's full. Right, verse 6. I will give peace in the land, in your land. And you shall lie down and none shall make you afraid. I will rid evil beasts. Now, this is, this is deliverance, isn't it? Evil beasts. Out of the land, your land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. That's war, isn't it? I mean, a lot of people have got a sword in their soul. A sword in their soul. 
It's war in that mind. God wants to deliver. And you shall chase your enemies. Yeah. I mean, no, they're on the run. It's offensive, isn't it? They shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase a hundred. A hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you how? By the sword. Now, look at verse 11. Here's what God wants. And I will set my tabernacle where? Where is he going to put it? Among you. Among you. Is he among us today? Mm -hmm. And my soul shall not abhor you, and I will walk. This is 2 Corinthians 6, 16. I will walk among you and be your God. You shall be my people. Praise God. How many see that now? Now look at verse 10. You shall eat what? What are you going to eat? Old store and bring forth the old because of? Now, how many believe that's true? Now listen to this, this translation. Listen to that. You shall eat the abundant old store of produce, long kept, and clear out the old to make room for the new. Hallelujah. How many believe he's got some new things coming? Call L-I-F-E. Amen? And lastly, I want to say this. We do have enemies. Amen? I remember when Irma taught one time on termites. I was blessed with that teaching. And I remember she said there was over, over 1,200 species. And how many know there's many types of demonic powers? Just because you've dealt with two or three don't mean there ain't 80 or 90 still coming at you. Isn't that right? And, and the uh, Britannica said that they're social insects. They live below the ground in concealed situations. And they live in large societies or troops. Now, I want to give you four scriptures. I'm not going to look them up, but if you want these about troops and demons and companies of troops, I'll give them to you. Psalms 119.6. Psalms 119.6. Jeremiah 5.7. Jeremiah 5.7. Jeremiah 18.22. Jeremiah 18.22. And Psalms 18.29. Okay? I mean, you know that... You know, when Brother Pitman was here, he, when he went to the demonic realm, he saw those spirits that were well-dressed, well-groomed. And he said they never went anywhere except together in company. And how many know that troops and companies have been let loose against the uh, uh, people today to destroy and kill and maim. Amen? Some, these, these insects live secretly for years in a house, um, you know, unattracted. They attack the root systems of crops even. They're highly organized in the termite world. <laughs> I mean, oh, Satan has a kingdom. And brother, it's highly organized, isn't it? And he de he's, he's delegated that authority to, of course, his demons. And how many of the damage of these termites is often done before their presence is discovered? Is that true? They work in, in a subtle way as long as they can remain hidden in their work and their work undetected. They devour timbers from the inside out. How many hear that? And they have a regular caste system. There's a queen and a king. How many know there's a king called pride and there's a queen called the harlot? That Satan uses. And they operate strictly as a commune, commune. They're never invited to a home, but usually have a reason for coming. Anybody here hearing that? Okay. <laughs> They're an intruder. They're an intruder, not an invited guest. And they're discovered by their destructive behavior. Maybe traumas, shocks, accidents, operations, whatever. Now listen to this. They're destroyed by strong chemicals. But how many know we have one in us tonight that's stronger than chemicals? Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I want to say two things in close. I won't get into this. I won't touch this tonight. How many believe that God wants us to go on and move up in Christ? Some of us are looking for a big old table in the sky called a marriage supper. You ever heard of that? I won't tell you it's not going to be that way. You know the marriage feast is happening right now? There's an intimacy between you and Jesus now. There'll be a finalization to it. Now listen to this. The marriage supper. Listen. I'm going to close with this. The marriage supper of the Lamb 
is the place in the Spirit where the sons of God receive the seed of Christ within their souls. And the long sought after change begins to occur, to occur in that soul nature. Said another way, way. The wedding feast, therefore, is the new thing God is doing in the earth at this time, in which the Spirit of God is overshadowing the elect of God, the call out of the called out, inseminating their souls with His own divine nature. Hallelujah. I mean, believe He's put the seed in us. And that seed has to grow and develop now. And it's up to us. Amen? And all the junk we get out of us, God can pour into us. And we can grow quickly and rapidly. I mean, though we don't have the time now today to play around. We must grow in God. Amen? Amen. How many want the enemy under your feet? Amen. Hallelujah. Just stand and praise Him. Amen? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Father, we thank You. The greater one lives in us tonight. You said no weapon that's formed against us can prosper. Father, we know we have many enemies, but yet there are many more for us than there are against us. And Lord, we thank You that You've given us authority over all demons and devils, over all evil spirits. And You said nothing shall by any means hurt You. Father, help us all to come to the place where we can deliver ourselves. As You said in Proverbs 6, deliver Thyself. Help each one of us, Lord, to submit to the Holy Ghost. Let us learn in these services, Lord, how to be set free. And let us practice it at home and in our churches as well, Father God. Help us, Lord, we pray. And help us to be those overcomers, Lord. Amen. That you're raising up for this hour. We believe, Father, it's time that we, we arise. It's time that the enemy also will come down. And we know, Lord, it'll be, it'll be great battles in the Spirit. And we know it's not in our flesh that we can do anything. It's in the Holy Ghost. So we trust in the Holy Ghost. We trust in you, Lord, to help us, to encourage us, and to stand with us in this hour. And we give you honor and praise and glory. Let's praise Him tonight. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We worship you tonight. We praise you tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sister, the Lord has put His Word in thy heart, the prophetic Word. And God is one, <coughs> saying, stir that Word up uh, in this hour. For truly I put it within thee. And the Word of the Lord is nigh thee, even this night, saith the Lord. So hold not back any longer, but yea, speak forth that which God has given thee. For the Lord God shall increase that word, and I shall send thee to this one and to that one. And thou shalt deliver the word of the Lord, for yea, the Lord shall move upon thee in this hour. And thou shalt declare the truth, and thou shalt speak the truth, even in high places, and places where I lead thee, saith God. For surely thy mouth shall not be shut, but it shall be open, and thou shalt declare the truth, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Sister, the Lord is teaching you to walk in the Spirit. He's, he's, he's removing some ob obstacles and situations uh, that's there in your way at this time. And God says, Fear not and fret not because of those things. You have set your eye on me, and as you set your eye on the Lord, God said, Those obstacles shall be taken out of the way. And I'll show you the way by the Spirit of God. And yet thou shalt run with joy. Thou shalt run the race uh, that's truly set before you with joy. Yea, nothing shall stop, detain, and hinder thee if you'll keep your eye upon me. If, you, if your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. Amen. For truly, I am marking your pathway out. It's already done, saith the Lord. All you have to do is just, just walk it out and you'll see what, I, what I'm telling you this night. So the darkness is fleeing. The light is coming. God is doing a work, a mighty work within your heart, saith the Lord this night. Hallelujah. 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 Sister Diane, the, 
Uh, the Lord says there is coming a move of the Lord. Uh, you've been told this over again and over again, but God said there is coming a move. So stand strong in the Lord. Stay on your knees. Stay in prayer. And you'll see it birth, saith the Lord. Others will uh, stand with you and pray with you, saith the Lord. For surely I shall overshadow that work. I shall overshadow the people. And it shall be a mighty thing that I shall do. The trumpet shall be sounded. And yea, the truth shall be declared, saith the Lord. Come on, let's praise Him tonight. Praise our God tonight. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord brought thee here to this place. The Lord has set your feet here. The Lord has done a work and shall do a yet a mighty work. So fear not and fret not, saith the Lord, because God is greater than the enemy. Look up tonight, look to the Lord, for he shall open your eyes and your ears, and yea, that which he has done, shall uh, he shall receive the glory and the praise and, you, uh, and the honor, saith the Lord. For truly you are my jewel that I'm polishing, that I'm doing a work in. Yea, look not back any longer. Those days are behind you. It's a new day for you, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Bruce, uh, the Lord has seen your heart. He's seen the, the tear. He's seen the hurts and the, and the ripping and the tearing. And, but God said, I'm going to heal those wounds and those deep recesses there uh, down in the inner man. God said, I'm going to heal all of that. And I'm going to bring thee forth. And, and you're going to declare and speak truth in this hour. I'm going to put you in places you think you'd never be. But God said, I'm going to put you there. And I'm going to put you there that you'll declare the word of the Lord. So do not sit down any longer. Arise up, my son, and be at your master's work. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Why sit here uh, why sit here till we die, right? Let's rise up. Come on. In the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let's just give thanks to the Lord for helping us to put the enemy down under our feet. Amen. Father, we thank you. We praise you, my Father. We give you glory and honor for helping us put the enemy under our feet. Hallelujah. You said shortly, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, thank you again tonight for healing Brother Jack and touching Brother Pat Robertson, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. May the Lord bless you. Bill's got a song, I think. Praise God. By the word of the Lord. We are made overcomers by the word of the Lord. We are able to stand. He reigneth forever, and His word is for eternal. He hath made His is 
This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.